Okay, welcome to fly tying with monofilament. Today we're going to tie a monofilament grass shrimp. We're going to start by trying to mimic a, a grass shrimp that I fished out of a pond. This is about the average size grass shrimp that the fish are feeding on at the moment. I have a peacock outside my window. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay, uh, the hook we're going to use is a Daiichi 2460 size 10. Uh, this grass shrimp is about three quarters of an inch, maybe uh, between three quarters and a, and a full inch. They normally, at adults, they, they range about that size. Now, as you see, the grass shrimp has a natural hump in their tail. Uh, different than some species and I went ahead and put a small bend in the hook so this would help us uh, mimic that in the fly itself uh, the bend is about two-thirds of the, the length of the hook now the first pieces that we're going to tie on are going to be 25 pound monofilament and we're going to flatten about five millimeters of the tip and these are going to be our tail pieces and we're going to tie those in underneath the hook and we want the flattened pieces to begin right at the eye of the hook now I've cut these about 5 eighths or we'll say 15 millimeters long and we're going to tie those in under our hook. Now we're going to use some more 25 pound monofilament to start to build up the hump in the shrimp's tail. Now to do that we're going to tie in four four millimeter pieces of 25 pound monofilament. The best way to do this is to take two pieces of monofilament, match up their ends, and cut them in half. And that'll leave us four equal pieces of monofilament. Now I'll use about a four or five inch piece, so that'll end up with uh, four equal pieces a lot longer than what we need. And we're going to go ahead and wrap these on, starting at the bend. Now I'm going to cover about two millimeters of this, and then I'm going to make my cut two millimeters further. And then you can finish cinching that down. Okay, there's, there's really no way to hold... Uh, <clears throat> four millimeter pieces up there and trim them with any kind of certainty so it's best just to go ahead and wrap down enough to hold them in place and then cut them okay now sometimes uh, depending on how healthy these grass shrimp are you'll need two uh, segments sometimes you'll need three uh, as you can see here, this one is pretty healthy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and reduce it by one length. <clears throat> and we're going to put three pieces on there and tie those down. Okay. Now to continue building the tail piece, we're going to take a length of 10 pound test and we're going to cut it into two equal pieces that we will tie in on top of the hump and on top of the hook. Now we want these pieces to start at the hook eye and we're going to bring them up 
and over our hump. Okay. And we'll trim our excess. Now, the grass shrimp has a more graduating uh, tail. So we'll take two more pieces, but instead of going all the way to the hook eye, we're going to go about halfway and we'll hold those in and wrap over and bring this forward and we're going to clip our excess before we get to the bend in the hook. Now this should give us a pretty good representation of this shrimp's uh, abdomen. So at this time before we get too far and have too many pieces in place, I want to go ahead and add some flex cement to kind of bind these threads to this monofilament and the monofilament and thread to the hook. Now I'm using homemade flex cement and uh, I'm not going to tell you that it's exactly the same as what you can buy but it's close enough to to work for these purposes to make homemade flex cement you take uh, the amazing goop the uh, adhesive and you thin it with a paint thinner called naphtha, naphtha and it works real good so this will this will dry and it, it really thins out a lot as it dries. As the, the naphtha <coughs> evaporates, it leaves just that thin membrane of uh, goop on there. So here we are now. And we've got our, our abdomen done. And we need to add uh, some more pieces to start building up our thorax. So the first pieces we're going to add are two pieces of 25 pound monofilament to make the antenna guards. Now the antenna guards are these, there's two of them, and they're these little flat pieces, uh, let's see if I can get it work, you can see it, these two flat pieces right here underneath the antenna, and they kind of make up the front of the, the shrimp's face. It's uh, they're before the, the mouth parts. So to do that we're gonna we're gonna flatten two more pieces of uh, 25 pound monofilament right at the tips uh, about five millimeters long and we're gonna tie those in loosely with a couple of thread wraps in front of our thorax. Now normally uh, in the book I tell you how long to make these, uh, but as we have a specimen here, I'm going to kind of use the specimen to see how long I want these. And I want to go a little bit longer. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and tie these into place pretty good with a few wraps and then I'll clip off the excess. There we go. Now we want to kind of bend these up a little bit. And 25 pound monofilament, if you bend it up with your fingers, a lot of time it's got pretty good memory. You don't have to heat kink it. So there we go. Now the antenna guards, I'm going to put just a little bit of a point here because when they're closed they have a little bit of a, a point together. So for the antenna guards, they're going to hold uh, three sets of antenna above them. We're going to use our tying thread to make these antenna, and we're not going to take it off of the fly to do so. We're simply going to make a, 
a loop by crossing the thread over the top and then we're going to wrap over this loop. And this is going to create uh, one set of the antenna. Okay, We'll go ahead and make this our long set and we're going to clip these off about an inch past the uh, antenna guards. You can make them as long or as short as you want. If they start to interfere with your uh, casting or start fouling the fly, you can always just rip them off. Okay, so then I'm going to put a bend in the excess and make a, another short set. And then uh, tie on the last bit of excess. And make the third set. Okay. Now, before we get any further, we want to add some color. You can see that in this area here, the grass shrimp has some internal organs and there's not a lot of color there but there is some and we it's too easy to duplicate that to not do it so I'm going to use two colors to do that uh, the first one is a cocoa brown uh, but you can use uh, a sharpie you don't you don't have to get a an expensive marker you're adding such little amount of uh, color on here and the second is just a little bit of Spanish olive or olive color and like I said you don't have to get Spanish olive you can just get an olive sharpie okay and then once again before we get too far we're going to go ahead and coat this with head cement with flag cement. There we go. Okay. While this is drying, we're going to go ahead and make our eyes. Our eyes are going to be made from 10 pound monofilament. And we're going to make them similar to how you would make a set of dumbbell eyes. Except we're going to use these eyes on their stalks. So we're going to take a piece of 10 pound monofilament. And we're going to heat the end so that it balls up with a lighter. We'll just Heat the end and ball it up. Now before you tie these on, we're going to want to color them with a black marker. Okay, there you go. So we need two like this. And we go ahead and we color them now so that they have a chance to dry and the black marker doesn't bleed out into the rest of the fly. Okay. Once again, I'm going to use my specimen to, to gauge how far I want my eyes to be. And you can see that on the specimen, uh, let's see if I can get it where you can see better. Okay, on the specimen, those eyes are would be off of the, uh, behind the bend of the hook. So we'll go ahead and put one in place. And we'll hold it there with a couple of wraps.
and then we'll match that eye with another eye on the opposite side. There we go. Now we need to build up the thorax a little bit, so we'll take uh, some of our scrap material, some 25 pound test, and we're going to tie in two pieces to make the thorax. We'll tie them in between our, our two eye pieces. And we're going to keep tying these down until we get almost to the bend in the hook and then we'll clip these off okay and the last piece we're going to add to the top of this fly is going to be uh, the horn of the shrimp Okay, the horn of the shrimp is this little projection here. It's sharp and it will stick you and it's serrated. Now we don't have to copy the serration on here, but we can mimic the point and the overall shape of it. Now to do this, we're going to flatten again a piece of 25 pound monofilament and then we're going to trim it to a point okay now this of course will be facing the other way when we tie it to the fly let's see I got those a little bit here Okay, so as we can see on the specimen, the horn goes between the eyes and it stops about two thirds of the way to the end of the antenna guards. So we'll place it on top here and we'll tie it in place. Okay, now you can just build up the thorax a little heavier with some thread wraps. Go ahead and trim your excess. And notice I've left a uh, demarcation here where you can tell the, the abdomen ends here and the thorax starts here. So we'll build that up a little more. There we go. Now the last thing that this fly needs <coughs> to look like its living counterpart is uh, some legs. And the legs we'll make <coughs> with our tie-in thread, just as we made the antenna. We'll take and make a big loop underneath, and then we'll we'll tie over and we'll go ahead and cut our first set then we want to take what we have left and we're going to cut it in half make a nut cut that in half so that we have uh, four equal uh, 
pieces of the tying thread. These are going to be our legs. And we're going to tie them in underneath the thorax with a few thread wraps. And this will be the four left legs. And we'll pull them across and under and then wrap over them. And that'll be our four right legs. Okay, at this point we're through adding material, so we're going to go ahead and work our thread down to the eye of the hook and whip finish. Let me go ahead and remove our thread. Now all we have left to do is to hink hink our little legs into their final position. Now we don't want to do these so uh, drastic that they uh, get in the way of setting the hook or or even you know foul your line but we want to kind of keep them realistic looking so to do that we're just going to put a couple of slight bends in them before we trim them so I'm going to take a needle and I'm going to heat it with the lighter just warm it and you're going to have to experiment doing this. Uh, if you heat it too much, you're going to burn through everything. So you want to start out with what you think is less than you need. And then you can heat it a little more if you need to. So I simply take the legs and give them one bend. That's kind of at a, a 45 degree angle. I don't know if y'all can see those. And then I'm gonna give them another bend, just a little more drastic. And then we're gonna carefully clip off the excess. Make sure you don't cut your antenna. <laughs> okay, and then one final coat of Fleximip. You want to really allow that flexament to get in there and bind these threads together because this is the strength of this fly. Uh, on a traditional fly, you, you have very little uh, exposed thread, and that's, that's usually on the head of the fly. But on this, the entire fly is exposed thread. And so you want to make sure that you have it coated And, and there you have it. Grass shrimp. It's completely out of monofilament. Only uses a couple of materials. Stuff that you probably have. And basically anybody can tie this. Just uh, it takes using the, the techniques and getting used to them. It's a different technique uh, skill set. But it's easy to master. And hopefully y'all enjoyed this. We'll tie some and fill up your, your fly boxes with them. They're a dynamite freshwater pattern. They catch lots of fish, lots of different species of fish. Uh, so give it a try. If you have any questions, you can contact me via email at HaneyF, that's H-A-N-N-I-E-F, at BellSouth.net. Be happy to answer any of your tying questions. Well, thanks for watching.